Hello everyone. Hope you all are doing well. Good to see the excitement of so many people today. Of course, this number of people dwindle at the far end of the journey. Anyway, a few announcements to begin with. The first one is that uh, tomorrow we'll have a special session around polity in public administration and MLA will join in. So feel free to ask as many questions as you would like make the best use of the opportunity only you all in the misfits ecosystem have this opportunity so make the best use of it no one from the external audience will join in class time will be exactly the same that we have today that's one second thing is uh, please read your emails properly if and when you receive those emails please read read those posts on linkedin carefully i think we have mentioned this multiple times that uh, no other email will be monitored other than the ones that are sent to info@misfits.pet i find it sad that despite continuous announcements continuous reminders some of you also send emails elsewhere and then you lament over the fact that why no one is responding to us you will not res- receive any response in fact you should not receive any response if you can't comprehend a simple sentence okay so simple request please read those emails carefully if you have any concerns doubts questions info at the rate misfit start back that is the email that is monitored by my team and they will write back to you as soon as possible and what kind of officers would you become if you can't calmly and patiently read through an email or notice or listen to statements another announcement is that we will have dashera and diwali vacations from 24th october onwards until the end of diwali i sincerely want all of you to spend those moments those times with your families or loved ones you have worked very hard for the past few months from ancient history to medieval history to modern history to economics you deserve a break and i can assure you if you were to break this cycle of preparation and spend time with the loved ones you are not missing out on anything these sessions these sessions all of these sessions are important but uh, do spend your time with families also it's a long drawn journey and certain things are important in life at the same time this will be a golden moment for those who for some reason have a lot of backlogs okay so make the best use of these vacations and holidays but whatever do not watch more than 2 3 episodes per day otherwise you will not grasp the concepts as well as you should be grasping after diwali the class timing will change and our pace will also change my expectations from you will also change because then we will move closer to the d day okay i think archita has already mentioned this notified all of you about 2:30 pm to 4:30 pm ist and this change is also geographical in nature the days get shorter during winters i want all of you to spend your evenings well go out for walks spend time with your friends loud friends whatever don't use instagram twitter youtube spend time in nature if needed many of us in the past have sent us requests to change the timing and we are doing it of course with any decision not 100% of people will love it but sadly we will not be able to do much about it acclimatize adjust be flexible in life people who are not flexible who people who are rigid they are the ones who get the sad end of life that's the usual case you should be open to changes and keep on adjusting neurologically it also makes a lot of sense to break monotony in life why 
because our brain is not a static organ if you are repeatedly exposed to the same thing over and over again for multiple months the same learning ecosystem the same timings that routine will perhaps lead to decreased attention decreased engagement this is proven so it makes a lot of sense to break that monotony once in a while and that is why we also give you breaks in every 2 3 months and also change timings static routine can definitely lead to decreased motivation decreased engagement in the tasks and you all will realize how alert you all will become when the new kind of dopamine start rushing in i want all of you to be fine with unpredictability in life getting comfortable with changes is crucial in life upsc of all the exams unpredictable public service commission the moment anything changes in the question paper there are two kinds of people the one who feels sad scared how will i do this the second kinds would be the misfitters who should love it because they are prepared to deal with changes weird questions random questions be the second one and you will love that the entire process so the timings will change after diwali and dashara vacations but yes today is a special day why because we'll some we'll start with a absolutely new subject in the next phase of your upsc preparation to all the newbies do not worry everything will be from the foundations just stick with your own schedule of watching one recording of history one recording of economics plus one live class and if time permits summarize those learnings send an email to archita trust the process and you will be surprised in just a few days how much progress you will make stay calm and participate in the journey make all the mistakes that you should be making that is how you will grow believe me perhaps this is the last opportunity for some of you to make mistakes celebrate those mistakes now let me ask you the first question why why geography why study geography why even have this branch in the upsc syllabus why not have large language models instead why not have cryptocurrencies instead a complete subject on llms or cryptocurrencies what is the reason that upsc is being so static the world around us is dramatically changing then why are we still learning about rivers ocean currents mountains what's the point how how will it help a future administrator because all of you will possibly hold really important positions for this country in time to come and why should study geography because if you do not have an answer to this question you will not grasp anything and whatever you might study for a month from here on ikshu your thoughts uh good evening sir um multiple reasons for it firstly i think why we ought to study it is because it's something that affects us all so anything that affects uh you know Uh, people on a broader level is something that always has to be studied secondly it really defines oh, who we yeah. even large language models affect us all you may not realize in what ways it affects you but definitely it's affecting us the way we think uh, subconsciously yes but um i do agree with it um but like i'm really trying to focus on uh, why this uh, like among other subjects why this static portion is very important and uh, for that um, um, just because i'm saying like it affects us all uh, it can affect us in multiple ways right it affects us firstly like climatically so wherever we are 
i see some people are wearing t-shirts but i'm wearing a jacket so it's very important to realize why is it that that we live in the same country but we are you know uh, experiencing different things also i think uh, another reason is that our geography really defines uh, our strategic interests also in many ways that uh, we are important to a lot of nations and a lot of nations are important to us basis geography uh, to a large extent also what kind of resources we have that also is really dependent to certain degree on uh, geography so i think it like it has multiple impacts right so it's very multi dimensional in that sense okay, that's got why it. twinkle off to you but first tell us why did you miss the last class the economics class good evening it happened for the first time in history yes. what happened hope everything is all right oh yeah i had to host a party oh, okay. sorry it explains yeah. yes uh, i tried to join in but then it was not i had to be there early of course uh, so we have to study geography uh, because uh, the geography of a region dictates the lifestyle the economy the um, uh, the health conditions of the people and as an administrator we have to be the best for the people that we are going to serve we we will have better decision taking abilities if we understand we will be able to maximize the resources even if we cannot bring policy decisions at like the central level at least at the grassroots le- level where we work when we work we will be able to take uh, much more informed decisions and second considering how climate change is a uh, apparent and it needs attention attention so to understand the geography it is very important because the people at the grassroots level will be most affected for example the flash floods in himachal pradesh uttarakhand that we've seen over the years and that are continuously happening they impact the people so we have to preserve uh, the ecology okay fair mm-hmm. enough arushika your thoughts hello good evening sir so according to me as uh, ikshu and uh, one of my other mate uh, twinkle has already mentioned that it has multiple reasons so yes definitely it has very culture political and social perspective because it is very mass centric and uh, uh, it will it is something that people at large and it shapes history economy like what kind of uh, for example antarctica or non antarctic regions so how it is indirectly and directly shaping the economy and, and all the tribes and all, everything so it's very much linked to art and culture and everything so it's something very common zone so it is important that's also okay fair enough all of you and raise your hands let's watch a video when you watch the video tell me your thoughts what's happening and merry christmas to all americans across our great country During these last few months, you and I have witnessed one of the greatest dramas of the 20th century, the historic and revolutionary transformation of a totalitarian dictatorship, the Soviet Union, and the liberation of its peoples. As we celebrate Christmas, this day of peace and hope, I thought we should take just a few minutes to reflect on what these events mean for us as Americans. For over 40 years the United States led the West in the struggle against communism and the threat it posed to our most precious values. This struggle shaped the lives of all Americans. It forced all nations to live Okay. Anyone any thoughts? Pritam Sir uh, geography even defines the stability of the region Okay makes sense So this is the day when United States became a superpower Okay In a way it became a superpower there was a duopoly before this things changed but my question is is united states still the most powerful country in the world today any thoughts on that can we say that united states is the most powerful country on the planet today
Sharma S. Go on. Good evening, Naman. I personally feel Matrix Flux is one of the most powerful. I can't hear you properly. Can you fix your mic? Yes, I'm back. Do you want to try again? Come on, can you hear me? Am I audible? It's feeble, but go on. I'll try to make a sense of it. Good evening, Naman. Yeah. I personally feel United States is not only the country to be considered as the superpower. I no, no, the question is different. Country. Please listen to questions very carefully. You all will make this mistake in your main answers. Interviews. The question was, can we consider United States to be the most powerful country in the world today? I did not use the word superpower. You can go through the recording once it is uploaded. Please listen to questions very carefully. Now, go on. Yeah. Good evening, Naman. I personally feel United States is not only the country to be considered as the superpower. Um, no, to be honest, it's a very uh, funny sentence to me when we say that US is uh, the is a powerful country. To be honest, because it likes to play a certain role, which kind of puts it in the power position rather than actually doing something about it. It uh, it is a country with the most uh, amount of debt currently. and uh, china is an emerging power uh, emerging power as well not uh, not since today or not not in the last few years but since the big beginning of time if i remember correctly and then there are important countries in europe as well which are pretty powerful so i would not particularly agree with the sentence us was uh, was consi- is considered to be powerful but it is a very subjective sentence in my opinion It is, of course, subjective. Yeah. But I didn't get the rationales behind that. Some countries in the Europe, a China. We'll come to it. Don't worry. But okay, point duly noted. Makes sense. Sumanth, go on. Ah, uh, sir. It really depends on how you define power, but um, mm-hmm. in economic terms it is the most powerful because it has by far the largest gdp um in the world right now in mm-hmm. military terms it's definitely the most powerful it has the strongest military all over the world there are two aircraft carriers in the mediterranean right now next to israel to deter other people mm-hmm. then in um people like cultural terms it's still very powerful because America has been projected uh, through the views of soft power especially like Hollywood and these things as a superpower all over the world and people have that ingrained in their consciousness in yeah. the global consciousness so I like how Sumant bifurcated it to give his own opinions that structuring is needed no argument is wrong no argument is correct as long as you can back it up you should get the marks but let's watch a video and let's hear from what the American president has to say the former one of course this so, up the united states of america is the most powerful nation on earth period <laughs> period it's not even close it's not even close It's not even close. We spend more on our military than the next 8 nations combined. Our troops are the finest fighting force in the history of the world. nation attacks us directly or our allies because they know that's the path to ruin 
Surveys show our standing around the world is higher than when I was elected to this office and when it comes to every important international issue. People of the world do not look to Beijing or Moscow to lead, they call us. So, To be honest, I don't disagree with him entirely. Of course, the former American president will have his own biases. And why not? He represents that country. If I were to ask the same question from, let's say, Kim Jong-un in North Korea, he would proudly say, no, it's not America, it's North Korea. That is the most powerful nation on Earth. Vladimir Putin will say, no, it's Russia. But let's take a step back and let's analyze 21st principles. Is the United States indeed the most powerful nation on planet Earth? Let's follow through on what Sumanth just mentioned. What makes a country powerful? What do you think? Of course, we'll look at what economy to begin with these days. It's very important. How many of you have heard of Wall Street? Almost everyone. Now, how many of you have heard of something called Lujiazui? Not many, perhaps no one. Lujiazui, I think it's a Wall Street equivalent in China. The Mandarin not good, terrible. So pronunciations can be terrible. Today, the Wall Street of China is the world's largest stock exchanges by market cap. But not many have heard of it. But everyone has heard of Wall Street. Why? Because whatever happens in Wall Street, even today, have direct consequences for the rest of the world. And we've seen this in detail, point by point, in economics. And to those who will watch the recordings will see the same. Why do we have foreign exchange reserves in US dollars? What's the reason? Why not in Georgian Lari? Why not in Turkish Lira? Why not in Mexican Pesos? Because US dollars is indeed world's primary reserve currency. Many commodities even today are priced in dollars. To see the relevance, irrelevance of US dollars, just look at the amount of transactions that happens in US dollars. Swift transactions. Those transactions are not settled in Georgian Lari or Turkish Lira or Mexican Pesos. Why? Because it is the strength, it is the stability of the US that makes US dollars a preferred currency for foreign governments to hold their reserves. Of course, and there are many other parameters, many other metrics. US consistently ranks among the largest economies in the world based on the nominal GDP. Even in terms of purchasing barbarity, it is still amongst the top economies. Therefore, it's not a surprise when something happens in the US, even today, in US economy, it has consequences for the rest of the world. Across India, across Japan, across South Korea, the list is endless. So economically speaking, US is indeed one of the most powerful countries in the world. But we all know this. Economics alone does not make that country the most powerful country in the world order. The economics need to be backed by military. Why? Why military? Look at Kuwait. A significant oil producer. An economically prosperous nation. What happened to it in the 1990s? Invaded by Iraq. Despite all its wealth, what happened? They did not have the military strength to repel the Iraqi forces. A few months ago, I was in Georgia for some work. Anywhere I went, even in some government buildings, there was a flag of Georgia along with the flags of NATO. 
Why? I don't think it's a part of NATO, but it wants to be the country of Georgia. Because the country of Georgia knows this. If it does not become part of NATO, no matter how much they progress economically, but Russia can ruin their economy, their country, whenever they want. How can they ignore what's happening to one of their neighbors, Ukraine? Before the war, especially before 2014, for the Crimea's annexation happened, Ukraine's economy was doing decent. Their agriculture, their industries were doing fine. But now they are scrounging for food, for aid, because their military could not defend themselves. This is not just a modern phenomenon, we all know this. Mughal Empire in India is known for its wealth, luxurious courts. How can you forget those monumental architectures across Delhi, Agra, Lahore? And what happened in the late 17th century or early 18th century? They did not focus a lot on their navies. The empire became vulnerable to external powers, the European forces, regional contenders. Their economy crumbled the day its military power crumbled, stopped innovating. I wish Nehruji had this realization when he was clamoring for with the slogan Hindu, Hindi Chini Bhai Bhai, 60s. Just imagine if India had nuclear weapon in the 1960s. Would China have assaulted India the way it did? I highly doubt that. The same way today, we cannot imagine Iraq or Russia invading the US. No matter how much Vladimir Putin would love that, but he can't think of the same in his dreams, invading the US. Why just look at the military of the US? United States today is not just a credible economic powerhouse, but that economic powerhouse is backed by phenomenal military. Think about this. Do you know how many, how many, in how many countries US maintains its military bases? It's more than 70 countries. They have military base in Camp Humphreys. Where is it? Very close to North Korea. They have an air base in Qatar. That base is central to their operations in the Middle East. They have a Yokosuka naval base in Japan. The Karina air base in Japan. It is not just about military bases. Look at their Navy. The naval power it has become. From attack submarines to ballistic missile submarines. They have possibly the best technology known to humankind. Look at their nuclear arsenal, the achievements US has made in space. Today, US Navy is probably the best, most powerful Navy in the world. So economic power is settled, military power is settled. Sumanth also spoke of something called cultural power. Forget about US for a second. If you were Mukesh Ambani, how will you become powerful? You will become powerful by setting narratives, right? Oh no. Isn't he doing that? Why Network 18 that houses owns many news outlets? Recently, he also launched something called Neeta Mukesh Ambani Cultural Center. What is the purpose of it? Is he alone? No. Adani ji has a lot of money. What is he doing with that money? Investing in media outlets also. NDTV, for example. Jeff Bezos. He bought Washington Post. Elon Musk bought a goddamn Twitter. Why? Because you can't become a superpower if you cannot rule over the minds of the people. And that US culture, whether you like it or not, has been ruling over our minds. If I were to bring one American in this group today, all of you would want to talk to him or her. Secretly, you all think, and all of us think, what that white-skinned American think of us. 
that cultural influence is not just confined to what they pronounce or how they pronounce but also what they eat how do they spend their money their ideology their philosophy there's not a single country in the world today that has not heard of apple or google or mcdonalds when i was in us i met an indian from uttar pradesh and he was telling me that water in ganges is getting dirty day by day like ganges or ganga this is what cultural hegemony looks like ganga becomes ganges himalaya becomes himalayas yesterday there was a newspaper article that taylor swift fan became the next prime minister of new zealand you know that christopher luxon i think from their music to hollywood to even tv shows I've watched across the globe new zealand to uttar pradesh in every corner of the world that is what cultural hegemony looks like we all know wall street but we don't know what it's called in china there is similar street talking to a friend of mine a greek diplomat i told her that i am in georgia for a few few days for some work and she immediately tells me that's such a wonderful place went on and on about how wonderful f- the food is that i should visit the coca cola museum experience the country music there and then i corrected her i am in the country of georgia not the state of georgia america has a state of georgia and it's not her fault even today if you were to google georgia the state of the us comes first before the country even though the google search algorithm is personalized this is the location but still the american state of georgia comes first before before the country of georgia i did that search on when i was in tbilisi in georgia so even the localization feature of google loves their culture why united nations imf world bank all situated in the us so it looks like obama is not wrong but now now my question is what makes the us the most powerful country in the world it is not just military or economy or culture the heart of it lies in geography it is a geography the If you think about this, it is a geography of the U.S. that has transformed that country. But how? How is that possible? Geographies can ruin countries, empires, civilizations. Geographies can make these civilizations the most powerful civilizations, the most innovative ones of the generation. incredibly important somya sir uh, the way it is surrounded all the uh, the sites by water am i audible sir yeah it is surrounded by water and uh, the way it has great lakes in it and that it Let me is show you a video bro so that you can get a much more idea interesting idea around it
what we just saw is an unfair advantage for the US Mississippi Mississippi reward system how can a reward system help in the creation of a superpower think about this what are rewards these rewards are termed by many as arteries for trade and transportation why arteries what are arteries i know there are many doctors in the community tripti any thoughts tell a medium by which we can do this we can do the trade like commerce we can do with the help of the rivers and with the help of the rivers the people living nearby that area in the agriculture they could be prosperous which ultimately help in the growth of the country but why arteries why not legs or hands or nose why compare it with arteries abhishek uh, arteries are the blood vessels that carry blood from heart to various uh, organs of uh, our body so similarly uh, rivers facilitate the transportation of goods and humans from one place to another so it's uh, the easy movement so that's why uh, there is analogy to arteries see arteries in our body they transport oxygenated blood from our hearts to the rest of the body these arteries are the reasons why we are surviving today not no what statement what if there were no arteries in human body we would die all our vital organs brain liver kidney they rely on what continuous supply of oxygenated blood to function the moment there is no supply there will be an organ failure now think about this arteries as the word that's been used for river systems these are the arteries for trade and transportation for all kind of transportations do we have in this humanity roadways railways airways these are recent phenomenon what about the eras when they didn't exist rivers was a ways and means through which goods were moved moved around today government of india is also pushing for waterways waterways as a mean as a mode of transportation why what's the reason and the leap hi naman hi everyone so uh, what i understand is that uh, government is pushing waterways because uh, that would be uh, you know, less uh, pollution would be there in the environment also less of government of india cares about pollution i mean obviously the longer run we do care about the pollution as well as uh, this would come as a they get about winning next elections largely of but course you're the... right about the sorry of course you're right about that pollution aspect it's definitely less polluting transportation cost also reduces mckinsey did a detailed study on this waterways transportation reduces the cost by 30 to 50% and then think about other factors decongestions so much of india's efficiency is wasted in traffic jams why because of congested roads how much of traffic could you divert by developing that waterway and here in america this mississippi river system changed the course for not just the logistics but their entire history it is the largest river in us by volume drains 31 states of the us not just that even two canadian provinces 3730 kilometers that's how long the length of that river system is how many of you have been to europe so month which all parts of europe did you go to 
Um, I lived in Geneva and Paris, and I visited Dusseldorf, Brussels, and The Hague. All these are diplomatic, really important positions. Father in foreign services. Ah, uh, he yes, works in the army. See, so tell me the river that is connecting the connecting Europe. Ah, uh, the Rhine, I think, is one of the major ones. There's another one, the Danube. Yes. Yeah, passes through ten countries in Europe. Forming the arteries for Europe, shaped the history for Europe, but still that river system, the new, which is passing through ten countries in Europe, shorter than the Mississippi River system. Such a massive natural advantage exists for the U.S. These rivers have strategic importance. Rivers can power industries through water mills, allow easy transportation of raw materials. Settlements thrive. around rivers why fertility of the soil agriculture becomes important rivers themselves are the sources for food fish such a vital protein source for many cultures throughout history if we were to visit citadels today in europe or in any part of the world including india you would realize majority of them are around rivers because it provides a defensive advantage harder for the armies to cross river it gives a lot of advantage to settled communities for strategic advantages to counter attack and therefore it's not a surprise to look at any great city any great civilization ever existed on planet where are they located around rivers mesopotamia often referred to as cradle of civilization where was it located between tigris and euphrates egyptian civilization where around river nile ancient egyptians established one of the most enduring civilization in history nile was one of the natural reasons for that indus valley civilization is named after the goddamn river ancient china the chinese civilization why why did it become civilization Just think about the yangtze river system ganga ganga is not just a sacred river for hindus it's a lifeline and has been a lifeline for millions throughout history the ancient city of banaras thrived for thousands of years because of this river system Roman Empire ruled over the world, right? Where is ancient Rome situated? Founded around the Tiber River. So it looks like geography is so important. In a way, this Mississippi River system is providing the U.S. an unfair advantage over the world. But of course, I think, as initially mentioned, they also have something called Great Lakes system. their advantage is not ending and that's why it's not a surprise that today us exports two times more food than number two food exporters in, exporter in the world they have the world's most contiguous prime land prime farmland over the mississippi river system Now I'm going to cold call a few. That's how you will learn. Can you think of any other reason why US is becoming so powerful? River systems, I agree, such a massive one. What could be other geographical reasons? Anu. So maybe no border disputes, like yeah. we have China, Pakistan, and other countries. Everyone would love to have Canada as its neighbor, right? Of course. Look how Israel doing so good in a territory marred by disputes. The entire region is disputed. Look at 
انڈیا پاکستان چائنا ورلڈس موسٹ ڈینجرس باڈرس ایف یو ٹو ٹریول ان دا ورلڈ یو وڈ ریئلائز ہاؤ ایزی ریٹس ٹریول ٹریول اکراس کنٹریز ٹاک ٹو اینی یوروپین آسٹ ہم ہاؤ مینی کنٹریز یو بین ٹو یو لائک ففٹی کنٹریز سکسٹی کنٹریز وائی بیکاز وی ٹیک اے بس اینڈ دیکن ایزلی کراس ادر کنٹریز بیکاز یو فرینڈلی باڈرس بٹ ان انڈیا Think about visiting Pakistan, Afghanistan. So, so many advantages. First, it starts with rivers, then look at their neighbors. And US is also world's leading natural gas producer. You know that? Not just that, they are also... By the way, which country produces number one, you know... Which country is the number one leading producer of oil? Many of you will confuse with Saudi or Russia. It's not that. It is the US. You'll study the reasons why that is the case. And this is very important. Why? Because no matter what you do in life, you need what? Energy. That is in fact this energy industry that is the significant contributor to the US GDP. Today, if anything happens in the Middle East or as we call it West Asia, India gets stressed. Because energy inputs are the most important inputs for anything that you do. But in the 1970s, cost of energy inputs went high. Indira Gandhi ji had to then manage an economic chaos, became a political chaos. In 1990s, same story. We faced balance of payment crisis. because something was happening in the other part of the world where energy is important but here in the US self sufficient to some extent even exporting it you can do that if they want you need energy to run industries drive services you need energy to produce agriculture goods transport that food and here unfair advantage for the US here also Anything else that I'm missing out on for the US? Take sure. Uh, so very quickly, it came to my mind, you know, like uh, how prairies is the rice, like the grain bowl of the world. So the location of US is such that it has various types of climatic, like, you know, those locations. So we have a very mediterranean sort of climate in the southern part and then you have like this temperate landmass where the uh, the uh, grain production happens and then in the top most you have like a tundra kind of a climate so i think it becomes very diverse and obviously so other regions have like their own advantages then because of that okay many of very well said but if we go a step before that There's also a very interesting story why they have such cli- kind of climate. By the way, we all know this, right? That US is the fourth largest country by area. And even that is important. Because then that makes a nation relatively more sufficient in itself. When you have large swaths of land, you can consume things, produce things on your own. You're shielding yourself from global economic fluctuations. Some of you will say, then look at Canada, look at Russia. They are much bigger than America. But here I want to bring Ikshu's point. Because quality of the land also becomes important. The large part of Canada, especially the northern part, inhospitable. Why? Because of Arctic tundra. Don't worry about these terms, tundra or temperate and... longitudes or latitudes will do all these things that's something called arctic tundra inhospitable forget about growing crops can't live there even for russia substantial portion of russian territory is an arctic circle don't do large scale agriculture china gobi desert so quality of land becomes important here also us seems to have unfair advantage the midwest of the us bread basket of the world ideal for agriculture
Is that it? No. There's more to it. Look at the coastline of the US. As diplomats, you need to learn about coastlines. So many negotiations are going to happen in the MEA around coastlines. The US coastline is five times more than that of the continent of Africa. Yes, the entire continent of Africa. Because they have a few inlets, large bays. US has three times more coastlines than Europe. Now my question is, how does it impact a diplomat? The more coast you have, the more coast. Okay, someone has an answer. For a diplomat, why is it important? Coastlines. How does it give you an upper hand in negotiations? Aisha? Yes, sir. The more coastline, the more access to the natural resources. Yeah, that's one thing, but there's a term that's used in international affairs. The surrounding water, of the international water. Apart from that, you also have control over the passing. Apart from that, sir, you can also control the passing ships and all. That, that too is under your control. We will come across a term called the exclusive economic zones in time to come. More coast also means controlling more ocean in your country's exclusive economic zones. Because waters within the exclusive economic zones could be rich in fish, seafood. A country has the legitimate right to explore, exploit and manage those resources. The seabeds of these exclusive economic zones can be rich in minerals, oils, natural gas deposits. And we all know how profitable these industries are. Not just that these, also in securing the energy needs for that country. So from international affairs standpoint, for all the IFS officers, a country with a significant EEZ, these countries can wield more influence in regional, international maritime discussions, negotiations. It will not be incorrect to state that the rights, privileges, responsibilities that are associated with an exclusive economic zones are foundational for nation's economic prosperity, strategic security, and these days even discussions around environment. Looks like simple things such as large coastline can have so many consequences for country's economy, strategic security, and their position in diplomatic negotiations. But wait, there's more to it. Issue mentioned about prairies. But what's the reason, you know, if you look at the latitude, the positioning of the US, the same position if you go through, you will realize there are many deserts. Then why California is not a desert because something called ocean currents become important. We'll study ocean currents in time to come. Don't worry. What are ocean currents? Currents in the ocean? We'll do it. See, these ocean currents can have huge consequences for the fate of the country, the economy of that country. And today, United States is on the correct side of ocean currents. These currents rotate perfectly for the US. It is because of an ocean current called Gulf Stream, the coastal areas of the eastern part of the US may experience milder winters. Otherwise, they would be frigid zones. It is because of Gulf Stream, southeastern US, notably if you go to the state of Georgia, Florida, they immensely benefit. Timber production happens because of it, thanks to Gulf Stream. The west coast of the US, the other half, California and that part of the world, rave about their climate. It's because of the cold water current. Otherwise, it will be a desert. Still, there is more things. 
the list is endless super power the fact that united states is in the northern hemisphere is in itself a magic why why northern hemisphere but if you think about it isn't it a coincidence that all historical cradle of civilization meet mesopotamia indus valley ancient china egypt even americans today they've all been in the northern hemisphere or there's something more to it shiva what is northern hemisphere has to do with it i'm guessing maybe with the currents and wind flows just because of that and if currents is a thing that we talk about then the southern hemisphere has large parts of ocean northern hemisphere has two times land mass of the southern hemisphere look at a globe the southern hemisphere northern hemisphere look at the land mass what does that mean two times the land mass yeah. than southern hemisphere oh. the bigger land mass means easier trade what is easier trade than means economy is much more competitive and when economy is competitive you then talk to others you facilitate trade agreements you remain competitive you forge partnerships you forge alliances and all these scenarios combined together can make trade negotiations smoother more amicable more friendlier but then countries in the southern hemisphere look at their plight they have to engage in longer trade routes this makes their trade more expensive more time consuming even for the flights that you may take can have a lot of lot many halts interconnections even today see geography deciding the fate of a country fate of so many civilizations today you and i are not just part of india today you and i or whosoever watching this discussion will be an integral part of creating a story for india that story could be the story of a vishwa guru or super power or hyper power or major power that story will be written pre written and shaped how by making the efficient use of whatever geography that we have and this is also marvelous give you the examples of america but india is bestowed with its own richness you will be a useless member of india's growth story if you do not take an effort to learn geography of this country in the previous classes i said and to all those who will watch the recordings will realize this that economies create empires but in reality it's the geography that help, that will help you sustain that empire for india to become vishwa guru extremely important that you understand grasp and perhaps analyze the facets of geography because without efficiently utilizing geography india will not become vishwa guru a country that you and i will work towards for in time to come you all will hold critical positions for the administration it will be a disservice if you forget to focus on the foundations and that is undoubtedly the geography that's how a superpower was created and the one that will be created So in the next few classes will transform and change that perspective by connecting the past present future by connecting the economy you will realize how valuable is geography now before i move on to the second stage of discussions how many of you up until today have hated geography and that's fine you can hate this subject for whatever reasons be honest but you hated this geography made no sense 
why study this what is this jeremy why so i tend to forget and get confused regarding the climates and the winds and the ocean currents and stuff like that i get confused so it's very hard for me to that it so just because you can't remember it you hate it i can't understand it only i mean nobody has taught me i mean properly i hope expect that from you sir okay but okay janani your thoughts um good evening sir uh for me the indian geography has always interested but to deeply understand indian geography we need to understand physical geography which is fundamentals but physical geography has always been a very difficult part for me so be it climatology or oceanography all these subjects were difficult for me to understand understand in itself so that is why geography has always been a hardship for me and i hope i learn it at least at this stage <laughs> someone give me some interesting reasons why you hate geography twinkle so the science part of for example why does the cyclone happen so the clockwise the anti clockwise so my i was very weak in the sciences so the uh, so those parts in geography i do not like but i enjoy the resources the animals and all of that but uh, just because my foundations in science are weak i cannot fully appreciate the subject and it was very intimidating also i was introduced to it very early in icse board so I, i was just scared then so i've just carried on to it but i i hope to overcome this fear okay interesting back so actually i don't hate but i think there are a lot of names for every different landmass and in rivers it uh, we say they change shape then there is a different name even for mountains So I just get confused that like why so many names are there. Okay. I think Mike also raised her hand. Go on, Mike. Good evening, sir. Sir, I tried studying it once, but I could not understand anything. Okay, so my uh, so what I'm getting a sense of is that most of you find it difficult because of the conceptual nature of the subject. Okay. and some of you hate it because uh, there's a lot to remember so what are your thoughts so my cartographic intelligence is not very high uh, additionally uh, my dad my father's been an aviator my uncle was in the air force and all, so they keep telling me trade winds this that and the other and they explain in greatest detail but it just doesn't make sense and then i start questioning my basic intelligence okay See if you if you don't like a subject, it's not your fault. It should not be. It's fault perhaps of the system or the way you have been taught that subject. But how can you blame yourself? How can you so confidently say that you are bad with sciences or physics or whatever? In fact, it will not be an understatement or overstatement or whatever. Geography is indeed one of the easiest subjects. in the upsc curriculum not just the easiest but one of the best subjects to score marks in the upsc prelims and mains both that is important for us wherever we get marks we should become very active as misfitters you are adequately prepared already to score 100% marks in your economy and history I've seen some of you who gave the ancillary examination, CDS, AFCAT, the CAPF, were spellbound by their accuracy in the economics portion, and this will be repeated in the UPSC as well because you have solved so many things. Now comes time for geography, and those who have become part of Misfits community just a few days ago, just stay with us for thirty, forty days. you will see the magic as long as you are being consistent not wasting your time geography is indeed conceptual and that is why i love this because once you understand the basics the basic concepts there is no power on earth that will stop you from remembering things the large portion of this subject is static timeless 
you don't have to worry about newspapers to the extent that you have to worry with economics or policy also if you were to analyze past 5 to 10 years question papers we will realize how predictable the subject is you can easily predict what kind of questions you would be asked i've always said this and i repeat this the most important question papers the test series will be from the upsc it's an organization a body that is designed to conduct this examination i do not care and you sh- should also not care what these various coaching institutes are setting papers for those question papers are being said by people who themselves have failed this examination multiple times but whatever you cannot avoid you cannot miss out on the official questions that upsc has asked in the upsc civil services examination for past 5 10 years we'll do it also from the ancillary examinations that upsc conducts be it the cds capf or whatever so the official papers once you're done with it analyzed it understood it then if you have the time left we can look at other papers do not fall into the trap of solving endless questions or wasting your time learn concepts and along with me analyze these papers the questions i think all of you have done that done, done that already with economics and you should know how beneficial that was so i repeat geography is not only one of the easiest subjects but one of the best scoring subjects in the upsc examination and it is sad that people still make mistakes in their final exam as misfitters we will not make any such mistakes in the next few days and especially after diwali hopefully we will be falling in love with the subject that will be my goal unfortunately experts have overcomplicated the subject an immensely practical subject the way they have done it with economics and history confuse you with innumerable resources do ncrts do gc leong do majid hussain do pmf whatever the list is endless what happens is that you then get overwhelmed with innumerable resources and then you also study subjects in silos in fact these people create subjects in silos let's focus on physical geography first human geography separate classes on maps mapping that's not how real world operates people who write these books are subject matter experts they have themselves never experienced the world of geography never been to the terrains of africa or south america or north america for them it's a subject create silos but when you are negotiating in the un in afghanistan or iraq or the engagements i had with eastern european governments then those conversations revolve around not just about politics or foreign affairs or local history in some way or the other fundamental tenets of geography has become important so we will not artificially divide the subject we will not do separate mapping sessions you would rather do those sessions in almost every class you can't understand geography if you're looking at map i won't be leaving it for the end day and of course as, as it goes with any of my subjects will make this immensely practical i will again be referring to mckin's insights even for geography gc leong ncrts many the resources sources to teach you this and you can entirely rely on this with recordings and live classes to score your best make your own notes in every class these notes should be your bible you know 2 years later once you become a topper in your upsc you may say you know these are the notes that i prepared with others will download it and they'll find no value in it that's the case with all toppers notes they write it and create for themselves not for others and here as fools we download their notes thinking that that's how that's what we have to study don't do that mistake all your notes are your own notes you do it for yourself for your own learning so our goal is to achieve 
immaculate amount of accuracy by the end of this module don't stress forget anything everything that you've studied about the subject so far let's relearn the subject with a new mindset mindset of a misfitter let's read an india of our dream we created an economy of our dream let's do that with the geography of our dream because to be honest we haven't efficiently utilized the geography that we are bestowed with the diplomatic negotiations of civilizational history the core of our politics our internal security it's reliant on geography so today's session is just an intro we'll move into the depths in from the next session onwards but i'm up until right now any questions anyone manushka uh actually sir i just had this question when we were talking about america being a superpower because of its geography i uh, i sincerely think that europe is more geographically diverse and you know was efficient during a point of time but now if we look at the current scenario definitely us has made good use of its geographical aspects and everything the factors have been in it been in its support and all all's good all's great but we still cannot change the fact that europe was uh, can you tell me five european companies that are in the top of that nasdaq list put okay. in terms of stock markets and i don't have an answer to that can you name american companies apple for example right alphabet google that we're using mm. what happened mm. to entrepreneurship in the europe what happened to productivity in europe i how many of I, us want to go to europe today for jobs versus how many of us want to go to the us mm. oxford university you know back in the days it was the that incredible university oxford cambridge you will be getting a dream jobs from there on today they aren't getting internships graduates from those universities they write to me on daily basis on linkedin the prime minister rishi sunak had to go to stanford for his mba so what's happening to europe things change people don't leverage their economy their geography Of course, not. I'm not anti-Europe. Yeah, if you you can unmute yourself. Go on. Suggest like spectrum for modern history. Which book will you suggest for geography to refer? Have your own notes. Rely entirely on misfits. I can vouch for the quality that we'll deliver. Sadly, we don't have such straightforwardness in economics and geography. But if you were to rely on books entirely, I would recommend NCERTs. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. But of course, uh, we'll we'll need a little bit more than NCERTs that I will cover in this fits. Shiva. Another unfair advantage for the USA is like a population density growth. Per person area they had, they had like they have now. And how is? I think I we spoke about that. The fourth largest country in the world is the US. Area becomes critical, right? To account for density. So that unfair advantage that they were already enjoying. But yeah, makes sense. Somya. I just want to tell this that uh, USA can be called as one of the super power based on tourism also. Like it is having the canyon, Grand Canyon, and uh, waterfalls like Niagara. That's not a super power thing, you know. That's the cultural thing. There are so, you know, the Eastern Europe, such beautiful part of the world. No New York, no Florida, nothing in compared to the. beauty of eastern europe for example or some parts of asia for example but in the friends tv show that has gone very popular across the globe they've sold 
the new york dream any any apocalypse that's to happen happens in new york so marketing becomes critical the way you market your economy the way you, way you market your tourism so tourism was not never the natural advantage for the us right croatian economy boomed after the release of game of thrones everyone wants to go there but very close to croatia there is something called montenegro just a few kilometers perhaps much better beaches much better castles or citadels that's strategic okay twinkle so this might sound stupid but i don't even know what i don't even know about politics so how do i make the most of the session tomorrow because the questions i really want to ask if if it may make the guest speaker feel like that i'm an undercover journalist because ever since i started caring about politics since i'm from bengal it always feels like the center stage relations is more of like a boxing match considering what's happening here in bengal so uh, how do i make the best of the session tomorrow it's okay um see we have learned so much of economics so much of history and when you were doing all those things it was not not just confined to economics and history so i assure you and the kind of education that you have received in the past few months is much better than the one that you will receive from the universities from which the guest speaker might come in so don't worry all your questions will be fine just be confident in terms of what you have to ask let me genuinely curious what you want to ask don't fake it pritam go on sir i think uh, uh, united states of america like it is it having a telescopic view uh, like from the creation of the economic institutions uh, for uh, mediating between the countries which are at war like example right right now and jammu and kashmir and india issue also after the independence so i think it is it is uh, it is having a clear view of uh, mediating between the countries uh, trying to make some uh, negotiation between the countries because it is very isolated yeah this is my idea it with it's very far from the rest of the world yeah it's quite yeah. by using its economic and uh, military prowess yeah not military exactly economic military is again a hard power okay molly and aman can we add one more point to all this like uh, as us is lately explored compared to the world so by that time all the world is already explored or even exploited so that I mean, might be I the sure reason the entire world is not exploited <laughs> okay <laughs> humans will exploit not just the earth but the moon and the various yeah, but, planets but but by considering the time us is the i mean the civilizations there were late okay welcome to so we'll discuss all these things in time to come don't worry aditya can you also quickly summarize your learnings from today ha ah, yeah sure sir i hope i'm audible yes you are Living on, living so. The question I had in my head from the beginning of the section was: We, we, as you always say, you know, get to the theory that we cannot learn anything inside us. So we are moving ahead in a very technologically advancement, technologically advanced era, comparing all of history. So how can we say that geography has a relevance when we look at it through the eyes of a uh technology impact uh, i'm not sure if i'm framing the question right but how we understand history through geography has been learned through all the classes so how can we understand technology through the eyes of geography or does geography have anything to do with technology i think it's a very good question 
see there's something called undersea cables satellite ground stations right data centers require a different kind of geological stability climatic considerations proximity to certain populations these are the backbones that define society technology physical infra is what is needed right so yeah that's one of the examples then of course you know today we are moving in towards the age of what electronics another component of technology what does it depend on what kind of metals rare earth metals from where do we find access to these natural resources rare earth metals here we have connections with ge- geopolitics economics geography so we talk about solar farms solar right where can we why why do we have that thing discussion happened in gurgaon around solar a few years ago and not in let's say switzerland so i think geography <laughs> like i said it is one of those timeless subjects like history of course like economics of course and that is why all the new variants that will come in could be large language models could be you know cryptocurrencies they will form part of these subjects but they can never replace those timeless subjects that wisdom priyanshu good evening sir uh sir uh, i heard it somewhere that the us is controlled by boss tell me your tell me your quick learnings. learnings today uh quick learning sir uh, i uh, didn't know about the technical summaries by the way hmm? sometimes but i didn't know about the all the stuff that was there more all the stuff that iran and saudi and so amazing uh, impact of mississippi rivers on us economy and sir uh, not least but i think sir economy is the more powerful than ethics when it comes to geopolitics sorry sir uh, i think sir economy is more important than ethics to become super power if you believe so then fine no sir uh, historical examples sir what he was did in middle east was not ethical but when it comes to economy sir you were in all uh, about the all countries see i may be wrong sir see see i think uh, you should engage in ethics discussions with shatakshi but uh, the thing about ethics is you know so fluid across geographies across nations across timelines what could be ethical during the hitler's nazi germany you can't think anything closely similar today when iraq was bombed that was justified it was ethical duty to promote human rights democracy but only after a few years we realized perhaps that was not ethical i can go on and on but uh, i don't think we will be able to justice But yes. Any other questions, anyone? Shri Harsha. Sir, good evening, sir. How are you, sir? Doing very well, thank you. Uh, sir, uh, basically today I learned uh, two statements from you, sir. That will be very useful in my answer writing. Economy crumbles when the day military cr- uh, military crumbles is the first one I found very interesting, and the second one is like reverse of the arteries to a country. these two statements are new to me sir because i learned all already geography once so these two statements are very new to me and uh, i just want to share my thoughts regarding uh, today's lecture sir like uh, geographical benefits without a wise ruler 
is always useless to them. Uh, like India used to have a lot of advantage uh, during uh, till Aurangzeb, but once Aurangzeb uh, uh, died, from then the uh, collapse of India started economically because of the weak rulers. Despite having uh, geographical resources and all and strong kingdoms, India was unable to capitalize it. Due, uh, at the same time, Europe started capitalizing their geographical resources and all. Second point. Uh, U.S. is also having a uh, worldwide diaspora. There. Like U.S. has citizens from all the countries, which is the biggest advantage. No country will dare to attack U.S. because of their citizens in in the uh, U.S. That I feel that is an that is also an advantage for uh, U.S. Sir. And also the other thing is brain gain by U.S. Sir. U.S. is attracting all the people across the world who have a uh, lot of uh, talent. So these three points, uh, I want to add the to the advantages that US has. That's what I'm saying. You need to understand there are some natural advantages and some advantages that countries can create. You know, if I can go, I can go on and about the incredible work Singapore has done. But if you look at the geography, perhaps you would be astounded. How did they do it? Look at some parts of the Middle East, the UAE. So, there are some natural advantages for every country. And then there are certain artificial excellences that they create. The rulers will create, the leaders create, the administrators create. We need to understand all the aspects. US, US's immigration policy, perhaps that's a policy, not a natural thing. Yugoslavia was such a diverse country, <laughs> coming to think of it. Montenegrins to Albanians to Serbians, North Macedonians. What happened? It crumbled, divided. Even Pakistan was was very diverse country in a way. Bengalis were there, Punjabis were there. What happened? Divided. So, policies become important. And coming to your first point that, you know, geographical advantages with an unwise ruler, useless ruler, will crumble the country. It's not just geographic advantage. Any kind of advantage with an idiot in place can lead to ruins. French Revolution, to Russian Revolution, to Nero in Rome. Yeah, so, the list is endless. Zimbabwe had what? Robert Mugabe? Things didn't go well. There. Aditya, any additional question you have? No, so I would like to take the opportunity to summarize today's session. If yeah. I am. Go on. Can I continue? Good. So today, I would like to dramatically call it the season three of Misfits. Geographical edition begins today, where we are going to talk about geography starting today, which we mark by the beginning by seeing a video regarding why or is USA a superpower nation, wherein we came across a lot of facts that would make us understand to a very important reality that how the geographical advantage leverage USA into becoming a superpower nation, keeping its military and economic powers. Just tell me your learnings, your unique learnings that others can benefit from. Any unique observation that you would want to share? The unique observation I made from today's session is that whatever I learned in the earlier sections are still resonating, be it be a difference in subject, be it be a different scenario that how everything is interconnected and not to learn things in silos as that's not how the real world works unless you connect the dots you can never be ahead of the competition that's what i think is that one unique thing that keeps on resonating as i go ahead in this journey that's the common thing not the unique thing then 
but uh, good. Abish, go on. Good, e good evening, sir. Sir, my question is uh, pertaining to the history lectures. I'm at the verge of completing the history lectures. I think I've left. I'm I'm left with uh, five six lectures, but I haven't touched the book Spectrum, sir. So once I complete it, what do I do? I don't want to touch it. If you, I mean, it would be a bane for me, boon for me. Sorry, if you ask me not to do it and completely rely on your, uh, I mean, lectures and the notes that I've made from there. But if it's necessary, I'll have to find out time and do it again. Have you made notes from the lectures yeah. that you have? Okay, good. Yes, sir. So as of now, that's fine. However, I will request some of you, and I think in once we move closer to prelims too. Read few pages, so please. Uh, so I'm not saying do everything from X source or Y source. I'll be guiding you, but yes, lectures are fine. But I will be adding a few things in time to come. Okay. Priyash. Yeah. So am I audible? Yes, you are. Uh, my question is about uh, Switzerland and how they. I'm not sure they didn't have an army during the world wars or before, and how are they able to maintain their economy even while not having an army? Who is the prime minister or president of Switzerland? Uh, I'm not aware. You know, talk to any Swiss, even they won't be aware. Of it. Why? What's the reason? What could be the reason? Any thoughts, anyone? Yeah, we all know all the prime ministers, presidents. Switzerland, no idea. A country that's the home to many international organizations. WTO, UN. A country that's the financial center of the world, in a way. Dr. Amitabh Bachchan and politicians. Secrecy, reliability, stability of that country. A country known for its direct democracy. But at the same time, a country that is highly developed. Far more to machines, chocolates. Interesting. I mean, I'll, I should make a case study on, on Switzerland. So I don't think I'll I'll do justice in just five minutes or ten minutes of your response. In fact, I was reading uh, one of the books uh, of Nasim Talib. I think he also spoke in length about why Switzerland is so unique. But yes, we'll talk about it. Don't worry. Sunindra, who asked that question? By the way, can can you please raise your hand again? On Switzerland, Priyesh, right? Priyesh, tell me your quick three unique outcomes, learnings from today's session. Um, uh, this was my first live session, and I didn't see any recordings before that. And today, I realized the importance of geographical positioning, the advantages of rivers, and how water is a main source for civilization and life, and other things like easy. How coastline matters in economic or, or policy making, and other things that contribute to the factor like military uh, and culture. See, I'll tell you what happens is what happens is many of you will read history or economy or geography in this case. You read about latitudes or longitudes, but you will not realize what's the importance of that. You will not ask yourself, you know, what happens if a country is situated in northern hemisphere versus southern hemisphere. You will not ask yourself why all the civilizations, the math mammoth ones, are from the northern hemisphere. So, my goal was to tell you that geography is not just what you're reading in book. In that book, a subject matter expert, after innumerable res you know, research or whatever copy pasting, they have just put things down. They're subject matter experts. 
not real world experts ask them what did they do how many companies did they work with how many government did they work with did they have skin in the game like i spoke in the economics people who have skin in the game are the ones who should be listened roman emperors or roman emperors the mighty ones because they died on the field they had skin in the game so yeah um to not make the mistake of just reading his reading any subject in silos many of your peers will make that mistake let them make that mistake but you should not and i will do my cautious bit to ensure that does not happen with all of you okay mohit off to you uh, hi naman hi everyone uh, thank you so much for today's session first of all uh i have a doubt from the previous class last class can i ask from economics uh, economics yeah i don't want to stress people out send in your queries uh archita will respond it's very personal question that is why i'm trying to ask you over it's personal then let's make it personal why ask in front of so many uh makes sense thank you so okay. much okay send us an email all right uh that's it from today's class we look forward to meeting you tomorrow so come with your questions of any kind and uh, yeah see you all take care